In this PowerPoint tutorial, I shall be showing you how to make a multiple correct answer quiz game which can calculate the points at the end of the game. To give you a demonstration, let me go to slideshow, click on from beginning and let's start the game. What numbers are greater than 2? So that would be 3 and 4, that is the right answer. So I click on submit. Let me answer this incorrectly on purpose. What numbers are greater than 1? Let me just put 3 and 4. And this says, hey, this is the wrong answer. What numbers are greater than 4? None of these. So I should not check mark any of these. Select the countries that are in Asia. Let me just choose India. Japan is also in Asia, but I haven't checked it. So in this case, it would also be a wrong answer. So then it shows my score 2 and 2 and I exit the game. So if you want to learn how to make this in PowerPoint and how to code all of these things, please hit the like button, subscribe button and let us begin. Let us now make our quiz game that has multiple correct answers. An example question of this would be what numbers are greater than 2? Let me delete this text box. Let me go to home and insert my own text box with the appropriate answers. So it can be 1. Let me increase the size. If we want to duplicate this, press Ctrl Shift and just drag this text box to the bottom. Select the text box, press Ctrl Shift and drag it down. So this is a quick trick that you can utilize to make your PowerPoints quicker. So these two are our correct answers and we need to have check boxes over here. To do that, go to your developer tab. If this is not enabled, right click here, click on customize the ribbon, check mark developer and click on OK. Now go to your developer tab and over here you are going to see our magic item, our check box. Click on that and draw it over here. You're going to see that it has some text within itself. We do not need that. Click on this, go to properties and under caption, select checkbox 1 and delete that by pressing the backspace button in your keyboard. And this can be checkbox 1. Do not change the name of the item. Now you will notice once we go to slideshow mode that the checkbox works but it is way too small. How can we increase the size of this checkbox? We cannot increase the size of the checkbox. However, we can decrease the size of our slide. To do that, go to Design, Slide Size, Custom Slide Size, and I can make this slide half of what it is right now. So the height can be changed to 9.5 cm, and the width can be changed to 17 cm. Click on OK and click on Ensure Fit. And now you will see that the checkbox has increased in size. Now select this, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V and duplicate it once more. Or you can always select this, press Ctrl Shift and duplicate it like this. This is perfect. Now. Go to home, take a text box, draw it over here and within this text box write submit. Let me reduce the size. Now let us make one more question. Now what numbers are greater than 1? Now these three options are correct. Let me make one more question. What numbers are greater than 4? So now there will not be any correct options. So no, none of these have to be correct. So we can have instructions over here. Now click the submit box, select this, copy this and paste it over here. And this button can be used to start the game. So I'm going to type start game in this text box. We can change the shape fill and the text color appropriately. Now come to our first question. Click on select, selection pane, and you will notice that we have checkbox 1, checkbox 2, checkbox 3, and checkbox 4. And we have that in all the three question slides. So it is now time to write our code. Go to developer, 
click on view code. And over here, select Microsoft PowerPoint objects, right click, click on insert, click on module. Now we need to declare that we have these checkboxes. So to do that, declare is known as dim cb1 as object, cb2 as object. What is cb1, cb2, cb3, cb4? They are checkbox 1 to checkbox 4. Now we need to tell what this is, like what does cb1 contain? It is an object, alright, but what does it contain? So I'm going to make one thing called declare checkbox and set cb1 as active presentation slides to dot shapes. What was the name of the shape? It was checkbox1. We had C and B capital. We can check it. C is capital, B is capital. So have C and B capital over here too. Well, the format and object. Perfect. But now we have one issue. Our checkbox 1 shouldn't only be the slide 2 checkbox, else we will have to repeat this for every single question slide. So what we can do is, we can tell whatever the current slide is being shown in slideshow mode. Its checkbox 1 has to be taken into consideration. So to do that, we can declare dim cs as slide. And what is cs? CS is active presentation, slideshow window, view, slide. Whatever slide the user is currently in, that slide's checkbox will be CB1. Perfect. So just copy paste this line of code. CB2, CB3, CB4. CB2, CB3 and CB4. Perfect. So we have declared all our checkboxes. Now, let us make a subroutine for correct answer. Subcorrect. If it is a correct answer, let me have a message box saying, Hey, this is the correct answer. Good job. Let me make a subroutine for the wrong answer. Message box. Hey, this is not the right answer. Try again. Perfect. Now, we need to make one more subroutine that is going to identify what checkboxes have been checked. So if I check a text box in coding language, we say that the checkbox is true. If it is unchecked, we say that these checkboxes are false. So the first two options can be false and the last two options have to be true. So let me give you a demonstration in our code. Let me put here CB collect, which is checkbox collect, 3, 4. And over here, we are going to have an if condition. If CB1 dot value equal false and CB2 dot value equal false, CB3 dot value has to be true and CB4 dot value also has to be true. Then collect else wrong and if perfect so whatever is in this macro whatever is in this subroutine that is going to be run if i type the name of the subroutine over here and now we need to say what is cb1 cb1 is in declare checkbox so copy the name of this subroutine and paste it over here now let us check this out go to presentation one in slide two Click on the submit button, click on insert, click on action, click on run macro, CB correct 3, 4. Okay. So now in this case, it has to be 2, 3 and 4. Right. So copy this, paste it over here. We can change the name of the subroutine to CB correct 2, 3, 4 and make the second one also true. Go to PowerPoint. Click on this submit button, go to action, run the macro 234. Now in this case, it has to be none of these. So make one more subroutine 
And in this, I'll just make it zero. And I'll make everything false. Perfect. In this submit button, I'm going to run the macro CB collect zero. So just click on the submit button, click on action, and you will get this box. Now let us make a subroutine for the start game button. If I click the start game button, I must go to the next slide. So active presentation, slideshow window, view next. Perfect. Go to presentation one, click on start game, go to actions and run the macro start game. So let me click on start game now in slideshow mode. You can see that the checkbox is already checked. We don't want this. We want to reset everything. We want everything to become false when I click on start game. So to do that, we can add more lines over here. Select everything mentioned over here. Make a loop for i equal to 2. My last slide is 4 with the checkboxes, so I'll keep it 2 to 4. Next i and paste this in between. And over here, cs should be slides i. So this line of code basically tells First, the value of i should be 2. So it sets cs as slide 2. So these full checkboxes belong to slide 2. Then when I say next i, cs equals slide 3. So these full checkboxes become of slide 3. So this is a loop and it does automatically. Now I need to mention cb1.value equal false, cb2.value also equal false, and cb3.value also equals false and cb4.value also equals false. Perfect. Now you can see that it's already checked, but if I click on the start game button now, it becomes unchecked. Perfect. But if I click anywhere on the slide, I'm able to move to the next slide. We need to disable that. To do that, go to slideshow, click on setup slideshow and select browsed at a kiosk. Now, this disables all the navigation. You cannot click anywhere, you cannot press any keyboard buttons to go to the next slide. You need to choose the hyperlinks. I choose the correct answers, I click on submit, it says, hey, this is the correct answer, good job. After this, I need to go to the next slide. So go back to our codes, and in correct answer, paste this line of code. We need to go to the next slide if the answer is correct. We can also now have more questions. So just duplicate your slide number four. And in this, I'm going to type, select the countries that are in Asia. So some right answers would be India, where I'm from. USA is the wrong answer. Brazil is the wrong answer. And the last answer can be Japan. So over here, one and four are only correct answers. So go to view code, click on our module one where the codes are present. Let me duplicate this subroutine by copy and pasting it. And in this, it's going to be one and four. So the first one should be true and the fourth one should also be true. And in this submit button, go to insert, click on action and the macro should be one and four. So I hope you have understood how we can duplicate our questions. Apart from this, when I click on start game, all these values should also be false. So go back to our codes and over here, include slide 5 also. Now it is time to make our scorecard. So let's make a new slide over here. Over here, I'm going to type report card. Let me delete this. I'll go to my developer slide. And I'm going to choose a label, which is represented by a capital A. And I'm going to draw this over here. And I'm going to click on this label, go to properties, and change the name to CA, which stands for correct answer. In my caption, I'm going to change that to zero. And over here in the text alignment, I'm going to change that to center. If you want to increase the size, click on the font, click on these three dots, and you can now change the size. Great, so this is our correct answer. You can also change the text color from this option 
let me make it green. I'm going to insert a text box that says collect answers. Now I'm going to select this. I'm going to press Ctrl on my keyboard, select the label, press Ctrl Shift and drag this to the right. Change this to long answers. Select the new label, go to developer, properties and I'm going to change this name to WA and the color to red. Now we need to calculate the value of the correct answer and the value of the wrong answer. So this number should increase by 1 if we get a correct answer and this number should also increase by 1 if I choose the wrong answer. So I can say CA dot caption equals CA dot caption plus 1. But where is the CA located? To find that, double click on our label over here. It says that it is in slide 6. So remember, slide 6 is the name of the slide. If I make a new slide in between here, maybe I add one more question. This will still remain slide 6. Here the slide number is 7 but the slide name is 6. So do not get confused like that. So just double click. Whatever name is mentioned over here, just take that into consideration. Come to module 1 and for correct answer, type here slide 6 dot ca dot caption equals slide 6 dot ca dot caption plus 1. So put this in bracket. Now copy this, paste it over here and make it wa.caption. And when we start the game, ca.caption and wa.caption should be equal to 0. So let me put that over here, equals 0 and wa caption should also be 0. Also one more thing, if we get the answer wrong, it asks us to retry, but that is not what we want in case we have our scores. So what we are going to do is, in the case of wrong answer, we must still go to the next slide. And I'll change this to, hey, this is the wrong answer. Perfect. Now let us test the game out. Now we can add one more button to exit the game. So just copy the start game by Ctrl C, press Ctrl V and we can put here exit, go to insert, click on action and in this hyperlink to end show. So if you click on the exit button, it ends the game. At the end, when you're saving the PowerPoint file that has macros, always remember that you must save it as a PowerPoint macro enabled presentation or else the codes will get deleted. Save it as a macro enabled presentation only. Please like the video, please subscribe to this channel. It helps me out, it helps the YouTube algorithm and it helps a lot of teachers discover these amazing features in PowerPoint. I hope you liked this tutorial. You can download these templates and many more quiz game templates from my website pptvba.com. Hey, I also do freelancing, so if you have any custom PowerPoint games that you'd like me to make or help you with your project, let me know my email is contact at pptvba.com. Good night, have a great day.